What's up guys? Today we are talking about code P0401 and this is Codes Explained. So, P0401 is the EGR low or insufficient flow code depending on the manufacturer's definition. And first of all, what is EGR? EGR is a system which recirculates a certain amount of the exhaust gas, hence EGR, exhaust gas recirculation, back into the intake during certain circumstances while the engine is running. A lot of the reason for that is emissions control. It reduces NOx emissions in the exhaust. So all of that aside, the important thing is if you have this code, how to fix it, how to get rid of it. And with the EGR system, there are several different codes that you can get. And often you'll get this in combination with other codes, but you can get it by itself. And basically what normally sets this code is Anytime the computer expects the EGR open, meaning it's commanded it open, it looks for the engine to respond. Generally, it's going to cause the car to bog if there's too much EGR, but either way, it's going to change the way the engine runs. If it doesn't see this and it cannot produce what it's programmed to look for, it'll throw this code saying that the exhaust gas basically uh, isn't getting into the engine well enough. There are a few different things that can cause this. And on top of that, there's more than one type of EGR system. So you may, depending on what vehicle you're working on, be dealing with different situations there. So what I'm gonna do is take you out to the car, show you some of the components and explain some of the differences and what you need to look for when you're diagnosing this. Okay, so the EGR system on most newer General Motors cars is pretty simple. If you look, this is what the EGR valve looks like. As you can tell by the electrical solenoid on the top, these are electronic EGR valves. This is actually not super, super common in the automotive world. There are different types. As a matter of fact, in older cars, it's much more common to see the vacuum actuated EGR valves, which will look kind of similar to this, but they'll have a big vacuum pod on the top. Now on the vacuum ones, you're gonna have another control piece somewhere else. You'll have a solenoid that opens and closes it by either applying vacuum or not applying vacuum. And then in some Nissans and Toyotas, it's an even more complicated situation than that, where you have multiple other little vacuum pods that play a part. But I can't get into everything in this video for the sake of this one, then we're just going to stick to either electronic EGR or vacuum EGR. Now on the electronic EGR valves, there's not a whole lot to check out. If you look at this one, you literally have one tube coming from the exhaust up to the valve the valve itself, which opens and closes, and the valve position sensor is built into it. Then you have another tube that goes out and into the intake manifold. So that's the entire system. The only reasons that you should have low flow codes on these is either the valve itself is not opening, which will generally throw also additional codes, but that is one possibility. The other is if it is stopped up on one side or the other, meaning one of these two tubes is blocked off and the exhaust gas just can't get through to where it's trying to go. There's a couple different ways to test that. The easiest on one of these is to take this off. You'll see the two holes. You can actually plug those, start the car, and then pull one at a time off and see if you've got exhaust gas coming out of one and if you've got vacuum to the other. If you do, then it's not stopped up. In that case, on this system, there really isn't much more that could be wrong other than the valve itself, which is the most common problem on these. Now, if you have the vacuum actuated version, there's multiple other issues. You could have a torn vacuum diaphragm in the main valve that can cause it not to be able to open. It could also be mechanically bound up. You could have it stopped up on either side or the control solenoid could be bad and it may not be opening it or closing it. In addition to that, you would wanna check the vacuum supply to the control solenoid and the line from the control solenoid to the EGR valve to make sure that it's actually opening. 
But on those, what I typically do to start diagnosing them just to see where the problem is, is disconnect the vacuum line from the top, apply vacuum to it, either with like a manual hand operated vacuum pump or something of that sort. And if it opens and the engine bogs down, you know you're not stopped up, you have a control side problem. Uh, if you open it or try to open it and it either won't open or there's no change in how the engine runs, then you know that you're stopped up. So it just gives you a quick sort of a narrowing down of where you need to check. Um, as far as unstopping these lines or passages, generally something like carburetor cleaner or something like intake manifold cleaner will do the trick you may need and you can go to pretty much harbor freight or northern tool any of those places have these cleaning kits that have the long wire brushes that you can stick down in the tubes to get them cleaned out it's kind of a pain but not too big of a deal if that is the situation and a lot of hondas actually have egr passages built into the intake manifold that you can actually open up like the v6 hondas the central plate that'll come off and you can actually see the passages and clean them out manually that way which is kind of nice but also a pain because they stop up a lot so that's the basics of it and um hopefully with that It'll help you guys uh, at least narrow it down and track it down. Any other questions, though, make sure you let me know down in the comments. Look at that. Easy yard just fell right off the car. Not even here. Just gone. Man, look at that space, though. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys learned something. If you did, make sure that you hit the like button down below. It helps my channel grow so I can make more videos like this. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you can see more of this series. And I do have several of these codes explained videos out right now if you'd like to go back and check them out. And other than that, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much and peace.